Hey guys, welcome back to Project Bodybuilding. We all know by now that Ian Valier did not compete at this year's Mr. Olympia. And he will not compete ever again actually because he's f***ing dead. <laughs> No, actually, I probably shouldn't joke about that, but he is actually dead to us bodybuilding fans now. In all seriousness, I am not lying when I say that Ian wasn't at the Olympia and will not be competing again. If you haven't heard by now, he has decided to retire. That decision kind of came out of the blue to most of us fans because he just competed a couple months prior to that decision at the Toronto Pro. He won his Olympia qualification there and seemed ready to go into prep. But behind the scenes, Ian was already kind of losing the passion and gaining the want to do other things in life. I'm going to go ahead and link his full video in the description if you guys want to hear him talk about his full thoughts about retiring. But this video isn't much about that. Today's video can be summed up in one question. Where would Ian Valier have placed at this year's Olympia? I'm actually wanting to do these types of videos for a couple of athletes that weren't able to make it to the Olympia because there were a lot this year. We had eight people qualified for the Open that couldn't make it for various reasons. So let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this, and if you do, let me know who you want to see a video about first. Anyway, I'm going to cut the intro short for today. We have a lot to unpack with this question, where would Ian place? So you know the drill. If you guys like these types of videos and want to see more, hit the like button and subscribe subscribe for more. So this is how I'm going to do this video and others too if I decide to do more. First, we need to narrow down the placings Ian might have gotten. We can't compare Ian to every single competitor because that would take way too long. So instead of that, I put out several polls for you guys for you guys to determine. First, I put out a poll with exactly the question we're trying to answer today. I asked you guys where would Ian place with a couple of ranges for options to vote for. Most of you guys voted for the 12th to 10th and 9th to 6th options with the 9th to 6th option beating out the former option by 10%. So it was a little more narrowed down at at this point, so I decided to get a little more specific. I decided to ask you guys if Ian would beat the 10th place this year, Charles Griffin, because I figured that'd be a good place to start. And the results were clear. Two thirds of you had Ian winning and I'd agree. So then I kept going and I asked you guys how Ian would do against the 9th place Regan Grimes. This was a lot more narrow and Regan actually had the upper hand by a few percentage points. But I wanted to ask a couple more questions to see if these results were consistent. So then I asked you guys who would win between Ian and the 8th place, Tony O'Burton. And you guys are so retarded. Now the results are flipped and Ian beats Tonio according to you guys, but Ian got beat by a guy who placed lower than Tonio. I can see how this happens. Maybe some of you guys thought Regan should have placed higher, and I get that these polls have different voters, but to clear this up a little, I decided to ask two more questions. I asked how Ian would do against the 7th and 6th place, Michael Crizzo and Hunter Labrada, and you guys were pretty clear on those two. The vast majority had the competition placing higher than Ian. So now we have it narrowed down to a few potential placings for Ian. He's gotta be somewhere between 10th and 7th place. To narrow this down, even further and actually answer the question, where would Ian place? Let's compare him to Regan Grimes and Tony O'Burton. That's actually going to be the bulk of today's video, but first I want to go through every placing up until Regan briefly to give you guys the gist of why Ian would place higher than any of those guys that placed before Regan. Starting at the bottom with Ross Flanagan, aka the Sauce Boss. This one is pretty easy to justify seeing as how he didn't even finish the show. Even if he did finish the show, the upper body still needs to come up a lot, especially the back. This one's really a no-brainer. Phil Klahar has fallen off from years past, but even from earlier this year, he's fallen off. His stomach and abs are getting really washed out, and they were very poor at the Olympia. So poor that they basically ruined three poses for him out of the gate, the front double, the front lat, and the abs and thighs. It wouldn't be hard for Ian to gain a couple more poses on him. Keep in mind, he's beat an even better version of Phil before, too. Next is Justin Shire. Again, like Ross, the sauce boss, Justin needs more size. It's his first year as a pro, what do you expect? Justin also can't even capitalize on Ian's poor back because Justin's is also really poor. The biggest thing things Roman has going for him are the lower body and conditioning. Both areas I think Ian prevails in or at least matches. Outside of those things, Roman's upper body looks very worn out at times and his back is even worse than Ian's in my opinion. Then you had Theo Laguerre. Theo has some really good shape which honestly would have made Theo a harder competitor for Ian to be even over the guys that just placed ahead of him. But overall this is yet another guy that Ian overpowers in size and condition. Theo has good shape but he wouldn't be able to overtake Ian on that alone when Ian's conditioning and size are too far ahead. Andrea Presti is a lot like Theo, great shape and a decent amount of size, at least for Andrea's upper body. I think he has better condition than Theo, but definitely not better than Ian. And Ian's entire lower body obliterates Andrea's. Right before the top 10 was Hassan in 11th, and this one is pretty self-explanatory. Ian already beat Hassan once this year with a perfect score at the Toronto Pro. Now yes, I did an entire video saying that Hassan deserved to place higher, or at least should have had the score be a lot more narrow, but that was then. I still stand by that video, don't get me wrong, but the Hassan we got on the Olympia stage 
stage was so much worse than Toronto. It was his worst version this year, and honestly his worst version in a really long time. I get it, he tore his tricep a week out, but that was a week out, and his main problem, yet again, was conditioning. The tricep tear is not affecting his condition when it was just one week out. If you're not in condition by one week out, it was never going to happen. Not only was his condition off, but his stomach looked really big here. He's got to keep that in check because the structure isn't that good to begin with, so it can look really bad really fast if he doesn't keep it in check. Honestly, I believe the other two guys immediately behind Hassan in these placings stood a better chance against Ian. So if there was any doubt up until this point, if Ian couldn't beat those guys, keep in mind Hassan did and Ian beats Hassan easily. Sorry Hassan that you had to catch so many strays, but I'm a big fan of your physique and we all just want to see you get the placings you're capable of. And finally, rounding out the top 10, I do think Ian would beat Charles Griffin. We kind of already talked about Charles in the beginning. Two thirds of you guys thought Ian would beat Charles and I do agree. I think both of these guys are actually kind of similar. Both have not that great a shape. Charles is his worst, but he can improve a little bit by pulling a vacuum in certain poses. But then again, Ian's baseline shape is already a few percent better than Charles's, especially in those front shots. They both have good conditioning and that gnarly kind of look to their muscles, but Ian is more consistent with his conditioning and I think he's just better overall over his career. Not to mention Ian just has more size than Charles. So really you have to think if you're going to have two guys with poor shape go head to head, you'll more often than not have the guy that's bigger and more conditioned win. And in that case, it's Ian. It just makes sense and most of you guys agree anyway. So Ian fended off most of those guys pretty easily in my opinion. I don't think anyone's going to disagree. That's why I just sped through them. Now that we're all caught up, it's time for the main portion of the video. I don't think Ian is placing much higher than 7th and beating guys like Crizo and Hunter, but I don't think he's placing much lower than 10th and getting beaten by guys like Charles. So let's compare him to those guys in the middle, which in this case happen to be Regan Grimes and Tony O'Burton. Coming out of the gate swinging, I think Ian honestly wins this pose. I know half of you just clicked off the video, but for the other half that didn't, hear me out. Somehow Ian has the best of a lot of the body parts out of these guys. Best legs, easily Ian. Best arms, again, pretty easily Ian. Now Ian doesn't have the best silhouette, that would obviously be Regan, but Ian's really isn't that bad. Is it the most exaggerated X-frame? No. But his quads sweep a lot, his waist looks pretty tight here, and his lats do provide some taper. I wouldn't say Tonio's taper is any better, at least Regan has the X-frame going for him in this pose. And honestly, because Tonio has the weakest taper and is getting beaten in a lot of areas, including the abs, the thighs, and the arms, I'm going to get him out of the way and put him in third. So now it's between Regan and Ian for first. Regan has that structure, yes, and that seems to be increasingly important to the judges at the Olympia and other shows, so he's gotten pretty far based on that, but I gotta stop him here. For one, he's smooth, he's the least conditioned out of all of these guys, and we know that Ian and Tonio are known for getting consistently shredded, while Regan is kinda known for the opposite. And this is a nitpick, but I do not like Regan's rib cage. I easily prefer when he hits this pose with the flexed abs over the vacuum. And this is coming down to his rib cage shape. It's more of a V, more than an upside down U, which is just a genetic thing, I understand, but it is a good look. And as I said earlier, Regan's arms are weak. Ian has better peaks, and his arms are literally double the size of Regan's. Really, the only major problem with Ian is the fact that he doesn't have the best taper, and he happens to be standing to the guy known for aesthetics. But he doesn't have a bubble gut, his waist is tight, and he won every other element of the pose. So I actually got to put Ian in a surprising first and Regan in second. Ian makes it two for two quite easily with what is easily his best pose, the front lat spread. Firstly, let me get Tony out of the way. This pose is really good for him. It's really good for all of these guys, but unfortunately I have to put someone in last. For Tonio, any pose that relies on his structure is an uphill battle for him because he's smaller in stature and a bit narrow in the clavicles. Now this pose is a lot better for him than the front double was, sure. He does have a good X frame in this and good lats from the front. Not only does he have those silhouette aspects, but he has some of those finer details like thicker arms, delts, chest, and a good mid Section. Unfortunately for Tonio, these guys either have a bigger structure or both a bigger structure and the thickness that Tonio can bring in certain areas. Not to mention that while his lats are good from the front, the other guys are easily better. All these things put Tonio in third. And once again, Regan and Ian are left trying to take the top spot, but I already said I have Ian in an easy first place. Regan has the structure clearly and his lats are great. This is a much better pose for him than the front double. Again, he's getting this far because of his structure, but again, he's being held back from first for the same reasons as in the front double. Ian yet again has better legs, it's not even close, and he has better conditioning than Regan too. So not only does Ian beat Regan on the same issues that he did in the front double, but now in this pose he beats him on even more. Ian's arms and delts are popping and his chest looks a lot thicker and more detailed. Yes, Regan has the better structure than Ian. Regan is wider across the shoulders. Ian and Regan's lats though are pretty close. I may give Ian a slight edge because maybe they taper a little bit lower, but Ian is at least right there in terms of lats. Here's how I see it. Regan has been relying on his structure, but 
But when another guy with similar or even slightly worse structure comes along, but brings several better aspects, it's not hard for the other guy to make up ground against Regan. And that's what happened in the front double, and that's what's happening again in this pose with Ian taking this one. After being runner-up two times in a row, Regan finally takes a first place in the side chest shot. He really wins this on the pecs. Regan may have weaker pecs in general, but Ian's are much weaker, and Regan is so much bigger than Tonio, and for a shot like the side chest, that just matters a whole lot more. Regan may have the weaker pecs in general, but Ian's are much weaker, and Regan is so much bigger than Tonio, and for a shot like the side chest, that matters. From this angle, Regan has the thickest looking pecs, and they are the most detailed as well. The side leg is also huge. Not the most conditioned but good enough when he's bringing this amount of size. Now, honestly, for a pretty close second, I gotta go with Tonio. Tonio may be a little bit more narrow shoulder to shoulder and have a smaller frame in general, but he makes up for that with all the pop he's bringing. The delts are popping more than Regan's, his side leg is more separated than Regan's, but Regan overall had the thicker pecs, both actually, and I think Regan beats Tonio proportionally as well, if you were to take a look at that. So yeah, Regan is just bigger and more impressive, but Tonio is honestly right there, and that's saying something when you're getting outweighed by 40 pounds. And of course, I have Ian and third, but honestly, it's not really a distant third. A lot of bodybuilding fans shit on his side shots. And this is because he tends to look really good everywhere, but the actual namesakes of the pose. We'll see this in the side try too. I mean, take a look at the different areas of Ian's physique. Take a look at the side leg. It's not even close. His side leg easily beats both of these guys. The amount of sweep on both the quad and ham he has is crazy, and he doesn't sacrifice conditioning. The entire leg doesn't have an ounce of water on it. There's vascularity, and there's tons of striations in the glutes. All around, this guy is shredded. Then going up stairs, the delt is another one of those areas that's not so important in the shot, but is so good for Ian. He's got some of the best delts ever, to be honest. Maybe not quite top 10, but he's really up there. All three heads are really developed, and he's got striations in there too. Ian's arm's a little less impressive, but again, not too important. And then we get to the pecs. Definitely the weakest on stage. While they are detailed, they are pretty flat, and he doesn't have the roundness or the mass of Tonio or Regan. But really, the execution as a whole and the rest of the body parts are quite good. So I can definitely see an argument for having him maybe placing second. I don't see him in first ever, but someone could definitely move him up and I wouldn't bat too much of an eye. The back double is a little more contentious. Not for Ian though. For the other guy, sure. But Ian, as we all know, has that rumor surrounding his lats. I don't really care what the case around his lack of lats and lower back is. Whatever it may be, it doesn't really matter to me. What does matter is what we actually see, or in this case, what we don't see. Ian's back has never been the best. His lats have actually always been very weak. He's got some good density and thickness, no doubt. But that density and that thickness, it really only translates to the upper back. And really, his entire back is just not taking up enough space. Like his delts are literally bigger than his back. And of course, yeah, he has no lats. He has a really good upper back, but really it just falls off from there, quite literally. And that's a big stain on this pose for Ian. Then you go down to the lower body. His hamstrings are definitely in condition and they're pretty good as a whole, but that doesn't translate to the glutes. It's not that he's not in condition, but he just lacks that deep separation. Not a big issue, at least for me, but it is a flaw nonetheless. Anyway, I don't think anyone is going to argue that Ian isn't third in this one. Now this is where things get a lot closer. Regan's back is honestly one of his best body parts, and because of his structure, you you just want to look at him. But for my money, I gotta go with Tonio. Let me say this, the Olympia lighting did all of the black eyes at this show dirty. The darker you were, the more you were getting washed out. And also for some reason, they had smoke machines going when these guys did the routines. Odd to terrible choices for sure, but I don't expect them to change. But honestly, if Tonio can look this good in a photo that was taken off from the side with a smoke machine going and in some of the worst lighting I've ever seen, imagine what he actually looked like. Is he the widest? No, that's definitely Regan, but we're mainly looking at detail here. Regan has some okay thickness for still kind of being a young guy, but he doesn't hold a candle to Tonio. You really have to look closely, but Tonio has a Christmas tree and has more density in total compared to Regan. Now, the lower body is still probably Regan's just because his hamstrings are so much bigger, but Tonio's glutes and hams are still in, especially those hams. All in all, what I noticed from Tonio's physique, especially in this pose, is he's obviously not the biggest, we know that, but he has an extremely versatile physique. He's a lot like Dexter Jackson. He doesn't blow you away in size, but Dexter was consistently shredded and he could do so many things with his physique. He had great Great shape, great condition, and enough muscle combined with that shape to take out a lot of the bigger guys. I think Tonio does a lot in the back and enough in the lower body to win this pose. Ian really does a 180 in the rear lat spread, and now really everyone is fighting for the top spot. This is probably the closest pose of the comparison. Keep in mind, no one is a loser in this shot. Everyone showed up for this one. Since everyone is so good, including Regan and Ian, that does put Tonio in third. If everyone is as good as Tonio, why not just go for the bigger guy at the end of the day? Tonio has a decent lower body, like in the rear double, and his taper is just as good as everyone else's, but the other guys have good qualities too, and this is a bodybuilding competition. I just have to put him in last because everyone is just as good, but bigger. Now the next two guys are pretty 
pretty close. Ian is dense as hell, and he also is very, very wide. But again, like in the rear double, the lower back is gone. He has no lower back or erectors. Contrast this with Regan's back, which starts at his glutes and stops at his neck. He doesn't fall off in the lower lat region, and he actually has erectors. It's a day and night difference. Regan literally has muscle that Ian doesn't at this point. I don't think the lower back issue is as big as the deal as it was in the rear double, but when the competition is close, I gotta start nitpicking. Speaking of nitpicking, once again, Ian's glutes have no striations. The hamstrings are in, they're diced, but the glutes don't showcase any deep separation. Now shifting our focus to Regan, I think he does a lot of the same things Ian does, but better. First off, I like his lower body more. Regan's hams are thicker, more thick than anyone else on the stage, and his adductors are more filled in than Ian's. His glutes aren't the most shredded, sure, but neither were Ian's. Going upstairs, we already talked about the lower backs. Regan has one while Ian doesn't. Now in terms of width, it's kind of hard to tell who is wider based on the picks, especially because they both have different structures to their tapers. I'd say if both guys were on the same stage, since Regan is a little bit wider structurally, he'd probably be a few percent wider than Ian. And perhaps more importantly, or at least just as importantly, I like Regan's taper more because it actually tapers to something. It's kind of hard to appreciate Ian's taper because it's more just like falling off once you get halfway down the back. On Regan's back, you can clearly draw the contrast between the shoulders and the waist. Sure, Regan's back isn't as thick as Ian's, but like how thickness was more important to Tonio in the rear double, width and taper are more important in the rear lat spread. And Regan's detailed enough to showcase clear separation in every muscle group in the back. Still, I think this is close. Ian is still very, very wide and thick too. He definitely does enough to beat Tonio and get very close to Regan, but I'm giving the slight edge to Regan. The side try is just like how the side chest was for Ian. His tricep, not that impressive at all. Pretty skinny and not too separated either despite his conditioning. But then he has all those other good elements. The delt is huge and showcasing plenty of striations. The chest looks okay for this angle, plenty of detail. He literally has the best, most defined and tightest midsection of the bunch. And then that side leg is monstrous. It looks even better here than it did in the side chest. Again, he has that saran wrapped look and blows everyone out of the water in terms of size. Overall, he does have the thickness from the side too, which which besides the tricep is the second most important thing to look for. I'm going to be honest, I like Ian's pose the most. I know some of you guys are going to say he has no tricep, it's impossible to win a pose named the side tricep without that, and that's a point I completely understand, but I just like his pose. I think it's the overall execution. At the end of the day, Ian has everything but a great tricep, but still, this is the best I've ever seen it. Sometimes in the past, it was completely gone, but here we at least get a little something. Really because no one else is blowing me away in this shot, and I really like Ian's pose, I'm going to make him first. Really though, I understand if you weighed the triceps more in the shot, Ian probably wouldn't be first, but his pose is so good, if I had him anywhere other than first, it would easily be second. He definitely deserves at least second, despite how much you weight the tricep. Now between the other guys, I already said I wasn't wild by anyone. Both guys have good triceps and a good amount of thickness from the side. Tony has a lot of pop in the pecs, and his abs look pretty good too. Overall, I do think I like Tonio a bit more. He may not be thicker because Regan is just outweighing him by a lot, but his pop that he has in the pecs and those washboard abs really help him. And his tricep is also just genetically superior to Regan, it inserts a little bit lower. Not a huge deal because both guys have good triceps, but it is a nitpick. And because both of these guys are so close, I kind of have to resort to that. You could have Regan in second because on stage, I think it'd be pretty close and the disparity of size would definitely help Regan in this shot. But for now, that added pop in the midsection really helped Tony own this pose for me. I'm going to put him in second. You could put Regan in second pretty easily. Again, I'm not wowed too much by anyone here. The abs and thighs is a Regan pose all day long, so let's go ahead and put him in first to get him out of the way. He really wins this on the abs, easily the best overall midsection on stage. He has the tightest waist, good obliques, the abs have a good blockiness and symmetry and separation to them, and he rounds it out with a good serratus. His legs aren't the best, but they're good enough for how good he is in the abs. In second, I actually originally had Ian. I thought the abs were decent, despite the odd execution, and the legs were just okay. But the more I look at this pose, the more I pick out flaws that just push him to third for me. The upper body is fine. I don't think the execution is the best, but it's passable. Then the quads started looking really odd to me. I get what he's trying to do, but I don't think his quads are built for this type of pose and leg stance that he's doing. He would look much better with having the legs face the judge's head on more, but then he'd have to turn his torso a bit more to the front as well, and then his poor abs come into play and it derails the pose for him there. He had to choose between presenting the abs favorably or the quads favorably, and he chose the abs, which is the better choice, but Tonio is right there with both elements. He's taking second on this one, his quads are my favorite out of everyone here, and he's bringing the standard washboard set of abs. I think there's a slight amount of lower stomach distension going on, but I would much rather look at that than Ian's melting quad. So I think Tonio takes the runner-up spot on this one because he's actually good in both elements. 
And finally, to our last pose, the most muscular shot. The most muscular shot has been a good shot for Ian in the past. Honestly, he still has good elements here. The legs, the huge delts, the abs don't look that bad, and he has plenty of detail. He has really good body parts on top of being the most muscular individual. But I think we all know why I can't have him winning the shot. At his last Olympia in 2022, everyone was talking about his lats. But at the Toronto Pro, the focus shifted to his chest. Again, like when I discussed the lats, I didn't really care about the reason, because I will never know what actually happened or how it happened, it doesn't matter, but they look weird. Some may say it's a slight tear, who knows. What I do know is that it looks bad. It's really distracting to me. Dare I say it may actually ruin the entire pose. My eyes are just drawn to that asymmetry and the abs being right there don't help his case. Yeah, I said they weren't bad and they really aren't, but they aren't good either. And it just makes the whole torso look fucked up. There are some other flaws too, like the lack of tricep sweep and no calves, but I think it's already done. I know this may be harsh because Ian still has good elements, but the chest and the entire torso are just too distracting dragon for me personally. I would maybe put him ahead of Regan, who I am placing second. Regan doesn't have the most muscle. In fact, he's the least muscular in this shot, but he's still pretty aesthetic and brings good details here. And most importantly, he doesn't have the glaring flaws like Ian. Ian is more muscular, sure. So if you can get over the flaws, you can put him ahead of Regan and I could understand. But me personally, I couldn't put him ahead of Regan and I definitely wouldn't put him over Tonio. I know. How could the smallest guy on stage win the most muscular shot? Well, by being the most muscular guy without flaws. Tonio has the smaller frame, but he's really packing the size on on that frame. You don't have to be the biggest guy in general to win this pose. You have to be the most muscular, meaning the most muscular guy pound for pound. Tonio is definitely packing on more muscle proportionally than Regan. And since Ian already disqualified himself, that's Tonio's only competition for muscularity. Honestly, Tonio is even pretty close to Ian. I'd give Ian the edge, but Tonio doesn't have those glaring flaws like I've mentioned. Tonio has the great round three muscle bellies for the shot, and he has so much detail on the delts and chest too. And sure, he isn't as aesthetic as Regan, but that's okay, because Tonio is still symmetrical with good proportions. If you look aesthetic in the shot, it's probably because you're doing something wrong like Regan. Yeah, his pose is nice to look at, but the aesthetic guys typically have less muscle, and that's true for Regan, and in this shot, it's a hindrance. Regan doesn't have the muscle, Ian has too many flaws, Tonio just has a great balance of everything you want in the shot. So, I think Tonio has a very good combination of size, symmetry, pop, and condition to be everyone in this pose. Well, we actually had a tight race in this one. Here were the final scores. Each guy was separated by just one point. Ian managed to get second out of these guys in this metric, but he tied for first in my other metric that I use, which counts how many poses an athlete won, which for him was three. And surprisingly, the winner of the score category, Regan, only won two poses. So what are we to make of this? Well, since it's so close, I do want to move the final placings around. Let me preface this by saying Ian is really hard to judge. He does have really good elements to his physique. He's got great muscularity. He's a mass model. Monster, and he's got some gnarly conditioning too. But for every great element to his physique, he drops the ball in several areas, several important areas. Take those side shots, for example. Great everywhere but the actual namesakes of the pose. And his lower lats, while detracting, were getting better in my opinion, but at the same time, the chest was getting weird. This is why Ian gets a lot of hate. The judges really saw something in him that a lot of the other people didn't, which led to a lot of his placings and pro show wins being called into question by the fans. I do partly see the appeal in his physique, I really do, and I tried to defend him a lot in this comparison. But at the same time, I'm trying to weight shape a little bit more in my comparisons because that seems to be what the judges are doing now. So at the same time, while the judges have a track record of rewarding Ian consistently, they seem to want to reward more aesthetic guys nowadays, and that definitely isn't a quality Ian has a firm grasp on. Ian's placing really depend on two things. How well are the guys with better shape around him? Do they match him in conditioning or muscularity? And the second thing is how well can you get over his flaws? I think I can get over a lot of the flaws, admittedly, but at the same time, Tonio is is a fierce opponent, and I do not think Ian could topple him. I do think Ian would place ahead of Regan. I think Ian's wins in the front double and the front lat spread are kind of eye-opening. Ian was able to beat Mr. Aesthetics in two poses where aesthetics were very important, and if these guys were to stand next to each other on stage, I think Ian's better conditioning and better muscularity would help him pull ahead. Regan did, in fact, win the least amount of poses out of these guys, and besides the absent thighs, he really didn't have a dominating win. To make a long story short, I think the judges would award Ian over Regan, because while Regan has only aesthetics going on, Ian checks off two boxes for conditioning and muscularity. And hey, he did happen to win two poses known for aesthetics. However, Ian is only getting that far because Tonio has every category checked off. He has the condition of Ian. He also gets close in muscularity, at least pound for pound. And he has better shape without the major flaws of Ian. I think since the judges beat off the shape so much nowadays, Tonio would be able to prevail over Ian because he brings the shape, but isn't blown out of the water like Regan was in one or both of the other categories. I could see an argument for Ian placing a little higher than Tonio for sheer mass, and that may have been what happened here. But with Tonio bringing shape, 
shape and Ian bringing in some pretty glaring flaws, I think Tonya prevails over the entire comparison. This does give a rough answer to our question, where would Ian have placed at the 2023 Mr. Olympia? By my estimation, he would have been between Regan and Tonio, at least ninth place, pushing Regan to 10th and keeping Tonio in 8th. I will say this, I do think Ian is closer to passing up Tonio than he is placing 3rd. So while I'm putting him in 9th between these two guys, I definitely see the arguments for him placing 8th as well. Well, that's going to do it for me in this video. With any video regarding Ian, I know the comment section is not going to be tame, but I'm here for it. Leave me your Ian hate comments, or maybe for a few of you, a rare comment about how good Ian is. Either way, let me know who you had winning this main comparison and where you think Ian would have placed if he competed at the Olympia this year. By the way, if you guys are looking for high quality, great tasty supplements with plenty of authentic flavor collabs, head over to RiseSubs.com. Put whatever you want in your cart, but at checkout, be sure to use code DHUDSON5510 to get 10% off your entire order. That's DHUDSON5510. And 5510 at riseups.com for 10% off. And finally, don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more just like this one. With all that said, I'm going to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.